Come on, give the Lord a good hand in the house. Amen. Look at that neighbor and tell them, neighbor, in my life will never, ever be the same again. If you believe it, turn to the one behind you and tell them, end my life will never, ever be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Receive greetings from Bishop and Mama Joy. We were with them last yesterday evening. They sent their love. Do you receive their love? They are at DC Don Home this morning. Uh, they send their love to all of us. I want us to pick from where we left uh, last week. There's a book. Um, that I would really recommend if you can get a, a, a copy of that book to read. I'm not sure, so sure it's still, in, it's still in print, but if you can get it, uh, please go ahead and get it. Uh, I'm sure it is, uh, you can get it on, uh, either on Kindle, it's a, you know, the digital version is out there. It's called The Mighty Wind, like The Mighty Wind. Like The Mighty Wind is a book written by a man called Mel Tari. Mel Tari was uh, bringing out stories of actions of faith are in the nation of Indonesia. Indonesia is a, is a predominantly Muslim country. But, 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 but the number of people converting to Christianity is so huge that sometimes they don't even want to disclose that lest uh, they get them into trouble. So the, there was a revival in that country and, and then Christians would unleash their faith and see stuff happening in that country. You'd think you're back in the book of Acts. And that's why I wanted to look for that book and read it, like The Mighty Wind by Mel Tarry. And one of the stories that sticks, stuck out for me when I was reading that book was a story about a church in the very remote village in Indonesia. I think it's in Timor, in a place called Timor. Uh, one fine day, uh, the pastor gathers the church, uh, tells the church, you know, this day we, after preaching, we want to share from the Holy Communion, from the Lord's table. And... Uh, because it's in a very remote village, uh, not endowed financially, so one of the ladies prepares some bread at home and brings it to church, only for the pastor to realize we have bread and we don't have the drink. We don't have juice, we don't, I mean, we, we don't have it. So lays the bread on the altar, and then uh, asks the members, uh, uh, get some water and cause the elders and they hold hands around the water and they say, you know what, we, we, we want to believe God for what Jesus in the book, in the Gospel of John chapter 2. So he says, let's hold hands and they pray for the water. And uh, say, we declare this water is turning into wine. And then taste gives, gives it to the few elders and says, it is wine. And they all agree, yes, it is wine. And they take it and take it to the church and they serve it to the people. The bread and the water that had turned into wine. And the people take the water that turned into the wine and they all say, we've never tasted so sweet a wine like this. Unleashing their faith in very difficult and tough situations, very tough environments. And that's what I want to invite us as we walk in this journey, going back to the basics of the church, let's go back to that place where we start believing the word of God like it is. That if God says it, that settles it. Because the Bible says, greater works than this shall you do, because I'm going to the Father. That's what Jesus said. Greater works than this. He didn't say they'll be done by the pastors or the bishops or the apostles. No, he said, greater works you shall do if you believe in my name. I don't know if you've heard of any miraculous or faith-driven story uh, this week. I'll give you some. Let, let, let me give you mine, and then I'll be asking you to, uh, to share with your neighbor uh, one of the things that I do as, as, as just like a journey of faith, every year I tell God uh, I have a child in school. Uh, sometimes the school fees is quite a bit of money. I'm like, God, my child will never lack school fees. And I've done that for many years. I say, my child will not lack school fees. And I tell God, for me to do this, I normally take a seed and I make sure at least one or two students, that some of them that I know, that I don't know, I may not pay the entire of it, but I'll put a portion into their, into their school fees, and I'll say, God, 
because of this, my child will never lack school fees. Uh, three years ago, I told God, I don't want to be paying school fees. I want you to be paying school fees. As I saw this seed of faith in this life, either it's in high school or it's in college, it may be very little. God, I'm doing this because I believe in you that you will be paying my fees. Can I tell you something that never, and sometimes it's quite a bit, I have never lacked school fees. Not because I have the money, but sometimes all of a sudden just God opens the door uh, because of that moving by faith, sowing into people's lives, saying, God, this is a seed of faith that because of this, even mine, you will pay. You'll educate. You know what I'm believing God? I'm telling God, even for university, even for university, God, you will pay. So I've started sowing into people's universities' fees, saying I'm doing this not for them, I'm doing this because God, it, to me, it's a journey of faith. I'm looking to the next five years. I'm looking to the next ten years. I am unleashing my faith even before that time comes. I want you to turn to that neighbor. If you have a story of faith, I want you to share a story of faith with them. Is there a moment, maybe it's this week, you've unleashed your faith. Uh, uh, just share with that person, tell them, you know what, I did this, unleashed my faith, and this is the result that I saw. This is how God came through for me. Why don't you turn to that name and just share with them. That moment that you unleashed your faith. You said, I dared believe God. I dared trust him. And this is what God, God did to me. I dared trust God. I dared trust God. Come on, go ahead for a second. I'm giving you a second of my time. Go ahead and, and, and share with that neighbor. Share with that neighbor. Have you had some stories of faith? Come on, guys. Have you had some stories of faith? Let me give you a story of faith that I've had this week. I got a text this week as we move on. I got a text. This person doesn't have my number. Uh, so they sent me a text on Messenger. That's Facebook. That's where they sent, that's where they sent this text. Listen to this story. This, this person was in church last Sunday, when we were talking about unleashing your faith. So they sent me this text on, um, I think it was either Tuesday or Wednesday. I didn't even open. I got to see it late in the week. Uh, this lady says, my husband has not been working for a month now. My kibanda was not doing so well. And our son was to join junior secondary. We had no means, no hope, and we were just praying. We were seeking a place at a public school, but the amount they were asking for was almost the same with the fee I'm running away from. We said a prayer before bed, but, but under these blankets, I silently prayed, God, like you stopped Reverend Oscar's bleeding, you can do this one. I don't know how, but tomorrow I need to know how my son will get to school. That was it. And I slept. In the morning, I went to the school my son was in to get a transfer letter. I got it and went home. Then I got a call. Send me the school's pay bill number. I will pay you school fees for term one. This was, this was last week. When you unleash your faith and you trust God, God comes through in miraculous ways because our God is able. Church, I want you to understand that our God is able. He's able to turn nothing into something. That's why I want to push us a little bit today and say, would you dare believe God? Would you dare believe God, even in the most difficult of moments, and say, I'm going to respond by faith? When you realize I don't have the resources, I don't have the connections to see me through some of the most trying moments, would you just trust God and unleash your faith to him? When you can't get help from YouTube or Google or from friends, I'll tell you your only option and your only alternative is Jehovah God. And the beautiful thing with Jehovah God is that he honors faith. God honors faith. And interestingly, the good news from scripture is that we all have faith. All of us have faith. The Bible says God has given us a measure of faith. If you look at Romans 12, verse 3, the Bible says in the English Standard Version, Romans 12, verse 3, if you could give that to us, I will, will do this as quickly as we can. And then at the, at the tail end of this service, we'll just take some time and pray for us as we agree by faith today. Romans 12, verse 3, the Bible says, Paul says, for by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, 
but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith. Come on, read that together with me, that last line. What does it say? Each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Come on, read it one more time. Each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. Other version says, each according to the faith that God has given to you. In other words, God is saying, all of us have got faith. The measures may be different, but we all have what? We all have faith. You see, God realized that we may not have money. We may not have connections. You see, the only currency acceptable in the counters of heaven is faith. So God realized we may not have either the American dollar because you can't transact with the American dollar on the counters of heaven. You can't transact with the British pound. You can't transact with the Kenyan shillings. God realized all of us, sometimes we may not have all these currencies, but he knew there's something that you and I can have, and that's a measure of faith. You have it. You may not have money in your pocket, but you've got a measure of faith. And that's why God is challenging us. Would you unleash that measure of faith? When everyone around us is painting a bleak picture, when you read newspapers, watch news, they're talking about how bad our economies are, not just the Kenyan economy, but the economies of the world, talking about uh, uh, getting to a point by you know, the economies are doing so badly, jobs going down, you know, so on and so forth. You and I can turn your eyes off those news and say, yes, those are their facts, but I want to believe in a God who says, I shall supply to your needs according to my riches and glory. That's the kind of God I want to hook myself up to. And God is telling us, would you unleash that faith and trust in me? So last Sunday, we picked very important lessons from the story of the paralyzed man in Mark chapter 2, verse 2 to 12. And we saw the effects and the impacts of a faith of a daring faith when it is unleashed. And today I want us to continue from where we left, like I said, but I want us to continue camping in that town of Capernaum. I mean, for a couple of days in that town, people witnessed stuff they had never seen. Remember I told you that city is so significant in the Bible because the miracles that they witnessed, no other city had witnessed them. In fact, I told you Jesus rebukes them at some point and says, who unto you? If the miracles that were performed in your city would have been performed in Sodom and Gomorrah, maybe they would have repented. Because no city, no town experienced as many miracles, powerful miracles, like the city or the town of Capernaum. And that's, what I, that's where I want us to, to camp. We saw the paralyzed man uh, last week daring and unleashing his faith. When, when, when Christ was going on and doing his evangelistic meetings in that city. I want us to pick three more principles today of how that would help us uh, to release and unleash our faith. I'll be looking at the story of the, or, 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 of the woman with an issue of blood that happened in the same city. But then last Sunday we saw three things. We learned from the paralyzed man that faith acts. You remember? Faith does what? You demonstrate faith by action. We saw him rise up, call his friends. Faith acts. Not only did we see that faith acts, we also learned that faith expects. Say with me, faith acts. Faith. Come on, say it loudly. Faith acts. Faith acts. Now say, faith expects. Faith. Say again, faith expects. Faith. That you can't go to God without an expectation. Don't allow somebody to tell you, pray, and just leave. No, no, no. Go to God and say, God, I'm trusting you that God, I'm going to be healed. I'm trusting you that God, you, you, you're going to provide for me. Trusting you that I will see deliverance in my family. That's expectation. And then lastly, we also learned that agreement strengthens faith. That when you are part of a, a group of brothers or sisters who, has, who have crazy faith, who can believe God together with you, hold your hands and trust God for the impossible, agreement str strengthens faith. I want us to look at Mark chapter 5 as we pick the story of the woman with the issue of blood who was also a resident of the town of Capernaum. The Bible says in Mark chapter 5, verse 21, we'll see how many verses you can pick. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. 
Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak or his hem or the hem of his garment. Because she thought, other version says, because she said to herself, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body, and she was freed from her suffering. Jump to verse 13. The Bible says that once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? Verse 35. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He then said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. In fact, some other versions says, go in peace. You've been made whole. And that's very different from being healed. Go in peace. You've been made whole. Faith acts. Faith expects. Faith strengthens. I mean, agreement strengthens faith. And then number four, faith speaks. Faith speaks. I mean, you, you can't contain it when you have faith. You've got to speak that what you're expecting. Faith speaks. You see, God desires us, desires to bless us in all that we do. But I want you to know, church, that the first step to receiving from God is to speak it. Why? Because we've been created in God's image. Take you back to Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says, uh, when darkness was hovering on the face of the earth, the Bible says, and God spoke. In darkness, God spoke. And you that has been created in God's image, God has given you the same power to speak to situations. Faith speaks. You can speak to a situation, and we'll see that, we'll learn that from Scripture. We form, I want you to understand, we form our lives with every word that we speak. Sometimes you speak words that impact negatively upon us because you're not speaking faith words and God wants you to speak faith words. We form the lives of our children, of our businesses, of our careers, of our households, of our marriages by the words that we speak. Faith speaks. Look at our neighbor and tell them faith speaks. Come on, say it like you believe it. Faith speaks. I want you to come with me back to that city and town of Capernaum to meet this woman with an issue of blood. This woman, like the paralyzed man, was a resident of this very important and very famous city. This woman, we are not even told who she is. We are not given her name. All we are told, she's defined by the condition she was going through. But I think this woman was a woman of means. Because in read her story, you realize she had money to spend. You see, the streets of Capernaum, in, in the last couple of days, as they experienced this, had been a buzz with excitement. Why? One of the most famous residents of that city had come home. Jesus Christ. Not only had he come home, but he had led me meetings upon meetings where miracles were being witnessed. And, 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 and as he's busy, uh, maybe from one of these meetings that he's performed some miracles and he's walking on the streets, maybe going to a place to take some rest or visit some friends, the Bible says a leader, a very important leader sees him and he runs and falls at his feet. And he has one cry, my daughter is sick. In fact, she says, my daughter is dying. Would you come and lay your hands on my daughter? that she may live. He falls at his presence, pleading for his very sick daughter. Requests Jesus to accompany him home to pray. And Jesus obliges. And when they are on their way going to the house of this very important man, and you know he's important because you are given his name, and crowds are milling around because maybe they've just come from that meeting that he was, 
follow him where he's going. Within that confusion, people milling around him, there was a woman. And the Bible says this woman squeezes through the crowd and goes and touches the hem of his garment. This woman had been sick for 12 straight years. Not just any kind of sickness, but a very dangerous sickness, an issue of blood for 12 years. Gone to every hospital, talked to every specialist, spent all her money, maybe sold everything that she had to get better, but the Bible says, instead of getting better, she grew worse. No doctor could heal her. Every doctor had the same prognosis. This one is just there for you to manage. This one, there's no medicine for it. This one, manage it as you wait for days, as you count days when maybe you, uh, you will die or something. Every doctor had the same prognosis. But the Bible says she had heard about Jesus. And she had heard about Jesus because she was a resident of this city. Everybody knew what Jesus was doing. And then where she was, because according to culture, and you'll see that she couldn't mingle with everybody else. She could, I mean, the things that Christ was doing were hitch, reaching, I mean, hitting or reaching her, whatever she was. That's what the Bible records. She had heard about Jesus. What had she heard? She had heard of the things that Christ had done. This woman had knowledge about Jesus. We learned last week, you can't believe unless you have knowledge. You can't have faith in what you have no knowledge of, otherwise it would become foolishness or presumption. So she heard about Jesus. Maybe she heard about the paralyzed man. Maybe she was told about how this man had to squeeze himself through the roof and how by the time Christ was finishing the service, the man was walking, not this time being carried, but carrying his own mat. Maybe she had heard about a man who had so many demons inside of him that meets Christ and Christ, you know, casts out all those demons and the man gets clothes and puts new clothes upon himself and he walks away healed. She had heard about Jesus. Not only had she heard about Jesus, but she, said she does something that is very important for faith. The Bible says she said to herself, she spoke to herself. Friends, faith speaks. She spoke to herself. She said to herself. In fact, there's a version, the Passion Version says this. For she kept saying to herself. In other words, it's kind of like it's a present continuous tense there. She didn't just speak. She kept on speaking to herself. So maybe from where she was coming from, even before she got to that crowd, that's the same thing she was reciting. She kept on telling herself, if only I may touch the hem of his garment. She kept saying it. If only I may touch the hem of his garment. If only I may touch the hem of his garment. If only I may touch the hem of his garment. Gets to this crowd, realizes I can't get close to him, but she keeps on telling herself, if only I may touch the hem of his garment. If only I may touch the hem of his garment. I will be made whole. She kept on telling herself. She kept on speaking to herself. Do you know there are times when you've got to be your own doctor? Do you know there are times when you've got to be your own physician? When you have to, you know, shut your ears from every other voice and speak to yourself, speak life to yourself, speak healing to yourself, speak that you're expecting from God to yourself. Because the other voices out there are speaking all negative stuff. There's a crowd you can't get through. You are a woman. I mean, for crying out loud. Not only are you a woman, you have an issue of blood. You can't even get in there. You see, I want you to understand that in that culture, and I'll be showing you, the people are milling around Christ. I'm about 100% sure none of them were women. So this woman is going to unfamiliar territory. A territory she's not supposed to even go to. So she had to really convince herself. Speak to herself. Friends, some of us give up so easily. So easily. I want to call upon you today. That situation, that challenging situation that you're facing today, would you, would you summon all the faith that God has put inside of you? Instead of speaking about the condition, would you start speaking to that condition? 
Would you start addressing that situation? That son that looks so wayward, instead of throwing a pity party and crying all about, would you start speaking to that situation? Would you go to that room and lay your hands on that bed and say, this is my son, and my son is not going anywhere. My son will love the Lord. I've trained and modeled them in the word of the Lord. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, train up a child in the way they should go. And even as they grow old, and even as they get wayward at some point, they will definitely come back. Would you do that? Speak to that situation, to the glory and honor of your mighty name. Why? Because faith speaks. Come on, shout with me, faith speaks. Come on, say it again, faith speaks. She kept on saying to herself, you see, faith believes in the heart and confesses with the mouth. That's Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. You not only believe, but you confess that which you believe. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 11, they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They spoke out their testimony. That's how they overcame. You can't give up. You can't just give in because of the fights and the battles and the arrows that the enemy is throwing you away. You've got to learn how to speak. Say with me again, faith speaks. You see, Jesus says in Mark chapter 11, if you shall speak to this mountain, God says, speak. Mark 11 from verse 20, the Bible says, in the morning as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cast has withered. And Jesus says in verse 22, have faith in God. Jesus answered, truly I tell you, if anyone says to the mountain, does he say if a bishop or a pastor or an evangelist, or does it say if anyone does what? Says to the mountain. That's what God is calling you. He's saying you can speak to the mountain. Doesn't matter how long you've been saved. It could have been yesterday or last week or five years ago, ten years ago. God says, you can speak to the mountain. If anyone says to the mountain, be thou do what? Be cast into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen. It will be done for them. It will be done for them. Speaking. Is a demonstration of faith. I want to send you forth from this service today. Would you go speak to that situation? Would you go speak to that mountain? Tell it to be cast into the sea. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, then that which you believe, you shall have it done for you. We learn from that story that Jesus speaks to the fig tree. He curses it, says nobody should eat from this fig tree. You see, one of our biggest problems is because as mortal beings, we like seeing evidence first before we believe. But you see, faith is not about evidence that comes from the senses, either by sight or by hearing. No. That's, that's, why the prob- that's why we have a problem. That you want to pray and you're like, didn't happen, I am going to give you a story of that man who had this mountain, this hill, that was obstructing the sun from his main window. So he wakes up one day and looks at it and says, ah, scripture says I can speak to the mountain. And he looks at the mountain and he says, you mountain, I command you to be thrown into the sea. And then he goes to sleep. And then he wakes up in the morning and the mountain is still there and he says, I knew you would not go. I knew it. (laughs) Doubting in their hearts. Because you want to see evidence. When you read that scripture, when Christ curses the fig tree, the Bible says he, he went on his way. You see, the disciples, when Peter sees it, is when they are coming back, he realizes that the tree is doing what? It's drying from the root. Can I ask you a question? When did the tree start to dry? Is it when Jesus spoke or when Peter saw? When Jesus spoke. And that's why he qualifies it by saying in verse 22, if you have faith in God, whatever things you are praying for, believe that you have received them, then you will have them. You see, our formula as mortal beings, we want to have, then we believe. 
But with God, that's not how it works. God says, no, believe that you have received, then you will have. You know why? Because when you pray and you speak to it, in the supernatural, in the spiritual, God gets to work. And he works on it. What you're waiting for is not so much it being done. It's just a physical manifestation. That's how we pray for you to be healed. You walk out of this door, the symptoms are still there. We're not looking at the symptoms. God has done our work. The symptoms will catch up with the word of God. I believe that I have received, then I will have. You see, there are scriptures in the Bible, like Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3, that says this, Paul tells the Ephesians, that I want you to know that God has already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies. English teachers in this house will tell you the formation or the construction of that word is used is the use of past tense, not present tense. You have already been blessed. Another God, what God is saying, I already did it. So what God is waiting for you to do is to unleash your faith and be able to pull that which is done into the natural. I believe that I have received it, then I will have it. And that's why we pray for you and say, God provide finances. You go, you don't have money in the pocket. That doesn't move us. We know we believe in a God who has all the gold and the silver. We know this God will bring that into physical manifestation. That's what, that's what happened to that lady who sent me a text. She goes to sleep wakes up in the morning, goes on her business, and she gets a call. When did God do it? God did it when she believed, when she prayed, orchestrated things. By the time she's moving and acting on her faith, she gets a call and says, send me that fee structure, and I will pay that first time. Say with me, faith speaks. Faith. Come on, shout, faith speaks. faith speaks. Number two, not only does faith speak, faith sees. Faith sees. This woman believed she would be healed. Not only did she believe that she would be healed, she had already seen herself healed. This woman had already seen herself healed. Pastor, where are you getting that? I'll tell you, one of the best ways to read scripture is to take yourself back into that very scene and ask yourself some questions. You see, when I, when I read this story, I realized this woman was not planning to go back from where she came from the same way. She knew, I'm either healed or healed. There are no two ways about it. Listen to her language. If I touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. She doesn't say, I may be made whole. She says, I will be made whole. I'm, I'm not going back the same way I came. By the time I finish, by the time I tie that hem, I am going back whole. She had already seen herself healed. I wanted to understand this. Let me just paint for you the culture, the structure, and the layout of that town. You'll be able to appreciate what was at stake for this woman. You see, the streets of Capernaum were narrow because of the rocky structure of the city. So the streets were very narrow. They were not these wide streets that you're looking at. They were very, very narrow. And this woman, being a woman who had an issue of blood, had been ostracized, had been separated, because the Jewish culture said, if you have an issue of blood, you can't go where other people are. In fact, what you needed to do, maybe like a leper, was to tie like a jingle on your feet so that by the time you're walking and there are people that are in front of you and the jingle is, 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 is ringing, they would, say, they would hear that and they would know somebody unclean is coming to where we are and they would run. So not only was she a woman because she was not supposed to mingle with men because the, the crowds, like I told you earlier, that were milling around Jesus, I am so certain were men and maybe young men not women. In the Middle Eastern culture, women don't mix. They don't trap shoulders where men are. So you're not supposed to be in that territory. You have an issue of blood, you're ostracized. If people realize you have an issue of blood, you're unclean, and you're sneaking where they are, you'd be stoned to death. So this is what was at stake for this woman. One, I don't want to be recognized that this is what I'm going through. And I need to make sure that I finish and accomplish my mission so by the time I leave I'm different from the way I come lest I get myself into trouble that's 
the kind of picture. That's what was at stake for these women. You see, no woman in her senses would push around men. But this woman says, I will go. I need to appreciate the determination and the desperation of this woman. So determined that she goes to a territory that she's not invited. A territory that would cost her death if she's found out. Desperate because she's been sick for 12 years. She has nothing. All the money, all the finances, all the people who knew her, who maybe her, were contributing to all the fundraisers for those 12 times. She was, for those 12 years, had already maybe blocked her. You know, not even picking her cause. That's how desperate she was. It is because of that that she tells herself, if I touch the hem of his garment, she doesn't say, I may. She says, I will be made whole. Why? I have no other option. There is no other alternative. This is the only way that I have to get my life back together. This woman saw her healing even before she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. She had already seen herself on the other side healed. And that's what faith is. God, I am praying for provision. And I leave my prayer closet saying, God, thank you because you already provided. Not only have I prayed for it, I have seen him provide already. God, I'm thanking you. I'm praying for healing. And thank you because, God, I am already healed. I am seeing it. I am seeing it already done. Faith sees. Faith sees. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? Are you just concerned about what we're hearing all across? The devaluation of our shilling? The economy not working? The economies of the world being battered? The challenges that are around? Are you only seeing that? Or are you able to see beyond? Remember I told you, faith is not positive thinking. Faith accepts the facts, but sees beyond the facts. Or will you be like David who says, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou is with me. You know what David is saying? I may be in the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm seeing beyond that valley. I'm seeing the one who's together with me. I'm seeing beyond faith sees. David says, you prepare a table for me in the midst of my enemies. David is saying, I I'm not even paying attention on the enemies that are around me. I know they are there and my table is there. All I'm seeing is the table. I am seeing beyond the enemies. Will you see the barrenness of the land or will you see the blessings of God? Faith sees. This woman had already seen herself healed. She believed it so much that she knew I am not going back the same. What are you seeing? Did you know that what we see any, I mean, let me put it this way. Did you know that we see things not as they are, but as we are? We see things not as they are, but as we are. And that's why God invites us up there and says, I want you to come and see things the way I see. Remember Numbers chapter 13. Moses sends 12 spies to the land of Canaan and says, I want you to go and spy. And these guys go to this land and they spy. They even come with the evidence of the land. They came with clusters of grapes carrying on their shoulders. When they get to Moses, they don't even pay attention to what they were carrying. They look at Moses and say, the land flows with milk and honey. The land is great. And then they say, but we saw the giants. We were like grasshoppers in their eyes. How did they know when these people saw them, they were seeing grasshoppers? We don't see things as they are. We see things as we are. And that's why I want to challenge you. Would you change your lenses and start having the eyes of faith? That I believe in God. I'm not a grasshopper. I am greater in the sight of God. Greater is he who is inside of me than he who is out there. I am not a sick person. I'm the healed one of God that the devil is trying to. To make sick. Would you see things like God sees them and not see things as you are? Change those lenses and put on the lenses 
of faith. Faith sees the invisible. Cory ten Boom once said, faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. Faith sees. Faith sees. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? What are you seeing? Are you seeing the barrenness? Are you just seeing problems? Are you seeing God's promises? Are you just seeing the waywardness of that child? Or are you seeing somebody who can be turned into God's instrument and a vessel of honor? Are you just seeing how bad that business is doing? Or are you able to see a God who's able to resurrect even that which is dead back to life? What are you seeing? The woman saw herself healed. Listen to what A.W. Tozer once said. Uh, an American uh, missionary says this, God is looking for people through whom he can do the impossible. What a pity that we plan only the things we can do by ourselves. God is looking for people that he can use to do the impossible. But what a pity. Because of the way we see things, we plan only for those things that we can do by ourselves. Faith sees. Come on, shout with me, faith sees. Say again, faith sees. faith sees. Finally, not only does faith speak, not only does faith see, faith dares to obey God's instructions. Faith dares to obey God's instructions. I want us to shift gears as we come to the close of our message on this point. You see, God honors his word so much that when we move out to obey his instructions by faith, he has no other option but to accomplish it. He gives instructions. You obey his instructions. You put him under obligation to do that which he has said. Where do I get this? Psalm 138 and verse number 2. The Bible says, I have magnified my word above my name. That's what he says. Now I want you to note, obeying God's instructions, not your passions, not your cravings. It is obeying God's instructions. Psalm 130 says, I've magnified my word above your name. In other words, God is like he's saying, my word, I've lifted it so high that I'd rather reenage on anything else but not my word. No wonder. In Numbers, the Bible says, God is not a man that should lie. If he has said it, he will do it. He will do it. Faith calls you to obey his instructions. Jeremiah 1 verse 12 says this. He is watching for his word to perform it. Or there are versions that say he's searching for his word to perform it. God is waiting for you to obey his instructions, to obey his word. And as you do that, God is looking because he wants to perform it according to Jeremiah chapter 1. And verse 12. What about Isaiah 55 verse 11? The Bible says, And his word will not come back to him void until it has accomplished what it was set to do. It doesn't come to him void. So when you obey his instructions, that word doesn't go back to him void. It will accomplish. Faith dares to obey God's instructions. I pray that today you will move out of this sanctuary, this new week, and say, God, I want to believe in you. I want to speak, I want to see, and I want to dare obey your instructions. Here are two people. I'll give you two people, then we'll close. Two people who dared obey God's instructions by faith. Number one was Abraham. Genesis 12, verse 1, 2, 3. Abraham is told, I want you to leave your country and your people and go to a city that I will show you. I want you to note, he was not obeying his own emotions. He was obeying instructions. And I'm, I'm really emphasizing on instructions because I don't want you to do something foolish. There's a difference between foolishness, presumption, and faith. I mean, foolishness is when somebody tells you, I can sell you a bottle of oil at 100 shillings and you will be healed. And you get your 100 shillings and buy it. Foolishness is when you go and buy a handkerchief and you're told this handkerchief is anointed. That's foolishness. It's obeying God's instructions. God doesn't want you to act foolishly because faith is based on God's word. It is what he says, not what 
a man of God out there says. And then we, we guys have been caught in some trap. Because somebody comes and says, I gave somebody this handkerchief, and they start a business from manufacturing handkerchiefs. They start selling you water. They start selling you oil. They start selling you soap. Some of you even travel miles and miles and miles that you're going to look for a miracle. Sleep in the open air. Because this man has said, if you come in here, if you come in here, you see, when you look at God's instructions, God doesn't limit himself in a location. No, he doesn't. He's omnipresent. And many of us have been duped of our monies because somebody said, you know what? If you came here, Live with this water, some salt that they've bought from some shop, you'll be healed. They take your money, you know, and nothing happens. Or they tell you, send some money through this telephone number. I mean, that's, that's not foolish. That's not faith. That when you send this money, it will come back multiplied. I mean, you, you think for a minute. Why do I need your money? Say, take mine and multiply it. And I don't need your money. Now, that's foolishness and presumption. Faith is obeying God. So Abraham obeyed clear instructions from God. Leave your country, leave your people to the city that I will show you. And he left not knowing where he was going. And the beauty is that you look, you realize that he obeyed God's instructions, that even in his journey, he was not struggling. He was seeing blessings upon blessings. You read Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. You see how he was blessed because he was obeying God's instructions. The second person that I'll give you and then we'll finish, is Joshua. In Joshua chapter 3, God gives him specific instruction and says, I want you to lead the children of Israel to cross the river Jordan. And the waters are swollen. The river is swollen. That naturally or normally, you'll be swept if you try to cross that river. But he was obeying God's instruction. There are things that God will ask you to do that are sometimes risky, it makes sure you've listened to God's instruction. Not man's instruction. No. Make sure you've listened to God's instruction. And it's when they listen to God's instruction, the Bible says, when they put their feet in the water, the water was still running. It didn't even seem like they would cross. But when they put their feet again in the water, Interestingly, God has stopped the water 20 miles from where they were because they obeyed God's direct instructions. I want us to pray. Please be upstanding together with me. Be upstanding. Faith speaks. Faith sees. And faith dares to obey God's instructions. Base your faith on God's word. Base it on God's word. These, these prophets who come to you and tell you, I've seen who you will marry, those are not prophets. Don't, don't, don't be such. Those are not prophets. Those are charlatans. Those are charlatans. I saw you put on a, I don't want, know what kind of dress. Those are charlatans. Or there's somebody in your compound who's dug some place in your compound and put some stuff. Those are con men, those are thieves. Don't listen to them. Unleash your faith based on God's instruction. Listen, even in that house where you are, even without the pastor coming, you can say, God, my child is sick. You can lift up your hands and call for healing, and that child will be healed. You don't have to pay money for healing. In fact, the Bible tells us, freely you have received, freely give. You can unleash your faith. We don't want you to be, to be developing or creating dependence in this church. That you can't make a step without picking a call and calling a pastor. There are things you can pray for. Don't, you're supposed to grow and mature as a Christian and stand on your two feet. When there's a crisis in the middle of the night, you can address it. Speak to it. You can do it. That's who you are. That's what Deliverance Church is about. Not for babies. No, not for immature people who are always dependent that there's a flu in the house or oh, where is the pastor? Or oh, there's this thing at my place of work, where is the pastor? 
And some of you, are, because you're so used to stuff and stuff, oh, pastor, this person in the house, in, in the office, pray for me. I have a seed for you to pray this person out. Keep that seed. Pray for that person. Pray for that person. Keep it to yourself. Go buy your children some lunch and learn to pray for yourself. And learn to unleash your faith in Jesus' name. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? Unleash your faith. I want us to pray. I have a few seconds remaining. But I want us to pray for you. I want, if you're here and you're saying there's a mountain, we'll address that mountain together with you. I want you to put up that hand. In fact, just lift up those two hands together with you. Remember last time I told you, I also have some distance. There's something I'm seeing, but there's a gap between me and there. And I need faith. Would you speak to that thing? Would you speak to that situation? Come on, go ahead. Come on, go ahead. I'm giving you a second to do it. Speak to it. Is it a sickness? The Bible says, you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. You can command that sickness to go in the name of Jesus. Is it provision? Speak to it. The God who owns a thousand cattle on a thousand hills, God come and provide for me. It is an open door. Speak to that door. Command it to be open in the name of Jesus Christ. Are there things that have been stuck like we are being told by Pastor Mike? Speak mobility. Declare no stagnation. Are your finances held somewhere? Unhook them in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Come on, speak to it. Speak to it. Is it that child who's wayward? Speak. Call them by name. Call them blessed. Call them servants of the king. They're getting saved. They're not getting lost. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Faith speaks. Speak to it. In Jesus' name. Father, we join together by faith. And we declare a turnaround in every situation we've prayed for and spoken to right now. We thank you in advance because it is done. It is done in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name.